Good morning. This is Ken Hoven calling from the Santa Rosa County Jail on the 10th of May, 2015, and we're doing our typical Sunday morning message for those that care to listen. And I thought I'd share something this morning with the the Hoven and Hanson haters, particularly. Uh, Rudy's been uh, telling me and others have been telling me about the viral uh, stuff on the internet and of course I haven't seen the internet in eight and a half years but uh, telling me about the things people are saying and writing and I've thought about that you know since I've been evangelist uh, uh, since 1989 or 90 uh, there have been people who just simply hate the teaching that I that I share on creation evolution dinosaurs etc and I'd like to share some reasons why and I want to give a special message to the to the Hoven haters now this morning. We've been covering uh, the Sunday morning messages, the book of Matthew, and we're up to Matthew chapter 2, and it happens to tie in exactly with what we want to uh, want to cover this morning. So let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're the God of the universe. I want to pray that you will touch hearts, Lord, and I pray that you'll work in people's minds and spirits and attitudes and show them the truth. Lord, I pray that you'll give me wisdom, give me uh, understanding, give me compassion. And I pray that you'll use your word to drive deep into hearts and change lives this morning. I pray especially for the Hoven and Hanson haters that have the stuff on the internet and attack everything we do and say and that hope this trial coming up next week puts us under the jail for 400 years. And Lord, I want to pray that you'll reach them today. Show them that you love them, but that you're the God of the universe and you will be their judge if they don't accept your salvation. I pray that you'll get them saved, Father. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are in Matthew chapter 2, where we left off last week, and this ties exactly in where we need to go uh, for this morning. In Matthew chapter 2, it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And by the way, wise men still seek after Jesus, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Why would a king be troubled that men are coming to seek after a baby? Jesus is probably two years old or less, because later we see where Herod killed everybody two and under. Certainly this has nothing to do with the time of his birth and the shepherds. That's another story. They must have stayed in Bethlehem because they were too poor to leave. And I apologize for the poor posture in this crazy camera here. If I had to get ducked down, I can see you if I sit up straight. That's what you see right there. So I'm trying to get where you can see me the best I can. They built the stool exactly the wrong height. Probably a part of the punishment around here. They I doubt anybody thought of all that. They don't think of a whole lot of stuff. Anyway, so they were going to uh, going to seek after Jesus, and they uh, wanted to. Uh, so they would, they just wanted to worship the new king. Herod felt threatened. His position was threatened. I think what I teach on creation, and I teach, hey, the Bible is true. God made the world in six days. There's going to be a judgment someday. Uh, just like he judged it before in the flood in the days of Noah, he's going to judge the world again. And so I think my teaching uh, irritates some people, maybe some of you that are listening. It's not because of me, because I really am a nice guy, uh, but I think it irritates people because it threatens their position. Professors seem to be threatened by my teaching that the creation story is true. My very first debate was against a professor at the University of West Florida, and he had been teaching evolution for years, I think 20-some years. And along comes this Ken Hoven, this former high school science teacher, just moved to town so his wife could go to school, and he dares to come into the University of West Florida and teach, hey, the Bible's true, the earth is not millions of years old. God made it. And that is a great threat to some people's position. So for, for those of you that hate me and write the anti hoven stuff, is it because you have uh, a position that is threatened? Is it because maybe you are paid by somebody who wants me taken out? Like one fellow said, there's a guy who writes a lot uh, about me, and they find out he actually works for the IRS. Of course he's going to write anti-stuff about me. <laughs> it's his job. He gets paid to do that. And my teaching might threaten his position or his job. Well, I'm sorry. Don't take it out on me. I'm just doing what my master, Jesus Christ, told me to do. They're really mad at him, not me. 
Uh, then if you turn to the book of John, chapter 12, you see a story that is just, to me, stunning. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 12. As, as I read this, I marvel at how some people can have such hatred. Like, where does this come from? John, chapter 12, and verse number 10. This is right after, obviously, John chapter 11, where Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Here's this guy been dead for four days. Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, were all friends of Jesus, lived close to Jerusalem, a couple miles away. Jesus often stopped there when he was headed to Jerusalem and ate with them or maybe even stayed there uh, overnight. But Jesus raised him from the dead in John chapter 11. And in John chapter 12, we see an amazing passage, verse number 10. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. The guy's already died once. He's been dead for four days. Jesus raised him from the dead, and his life, his testimony, just being alive, just sitting there saying nothing, was a threat to these priests. And so they want to kill the guy. Talk about irrational hatred. They want to kill Lazarus simply because people are following him and turning to Jesus. I think some people hate me, Rudy, because I turn people to Jesus, and they don't like that. It turns them away from, I guess, their wicked lifestyle that others want to engage in with them, or turns them away from supporting evolution, or some something like that. The, the people that hate me, just irrational, they hated Lazarus for the wrong reason. Um, they hated him because he was turning people to Jesus. And if that's why people hate me, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep doing it the rest of my life, okay? <laughs> Get used to it. And I want to turn you to Jesus. I think you'd find it's wonderful. The Christian life is not what you think it is. It is amazing. I happen to know where I'm going. I know the purpose of life. I know where I came from. Whereas the evolutionist, he thinks he came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago, and he's going back to dust, and there's no purpose to life. Many, many hundreds of evolutionists and atheists over the years have, have stated categorically that they simply don't know what life is all about, that it has no meaning. Many commit suicide. Uh, it's sad. I don't want that for anybody. So the hated Jesus, the, the priests, uh, the uh, king hated Jesus. He was a threat to their position. They hated Lazarus because he was a threat to their religion and again to their position because it says many people followed Jesus which means they're not going to follow them anymore. And so this is a threat to their money. It always goes back to money. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, The love of money is the root of all evil. And there may be some of you that have a position in a university or a museum or someplace that teaches evolution, and my teaching is a threat to your pocketbook, you think. I can assure you I don't want your money. I want to see you saved. I want your soul but no, I don't want your money. Uh, I want you to serve God with your life. I'm no threat to your money, but they thought Lazarus was a threat to them. Then John chapter 15, turn to John chapter 15 and verse number 18. John chapter 15, Jesus said, for I'll start with verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But the, all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Hmm, they're doing these bad things to you because they don't know Jesus. Hmm. Verse 21, 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had no sin. They had not, they had, not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Ah, there's the secret. They don't have a cloak for their sin. Verse 23, He that hateth me hateth my father also. 
and you can read the rest of the chapter for yourself. But some people hate uh, what I teach and hate, hate Jesus because it removes the cloak for their sin. They've got some, thing in their, some things in their life, some sins, things that they know the God would think are wrong, and the simple teaching of creation removes that cloak. I saw that so clearly when I was at uh, Berkeley University. I spoke, and nobody would debate me. 146 professors refused to, to debate me publicly. So I just put a chair up on the platform and said, look, if any of you change your mind and get brave enough, come on up, we can have the debate right now. Nobody did. I spoke for, I think, an hour and a half or two hours, I don't know, on creation, shared the creation story. God made the world in six days. It's the only way it works biologically and, uh, and physically. And then uh, it can't evolve slowly. There's too many symbiotic relationships. And I went through the creation story. I said, God created everything in six days. Then it was destroyed with a flood in the days of Noah. And then uh, Jesus came and died on the cross to pay for our sins. And I just shared the basic gospel message. And then I took question answer time. Boy, was that hostile q and I don't know if you knew this, Rudy, but Berkeley is not a Bible college. Uh, <laughs> by, by any stretch of the imagination. It was, I had a blast, I, I was enjoying myself, I had fun. I have fun at every debate. It, the guys are a lot smarter than I am, but I really beat them bad because I'm right and they're wrong. It's real simple to do win, win a debate like that. Anyway, afterwards, I'm out at the table, uh, one of the secretaries, or I forget, one of the ladies from the church was there selling my videos and stuff, and I'm standing there answering more questions. And this huge, uh, I think, football player from Berkeley uh, University, he said, uh, he was angry. He said, evolution is a fact. I said, well, son, calm down, calm down just a minute. I said, let me ask you a question. Suppose what I said tonight was true. Suppose the creation story was true. Suppose there's a creator. Suppose God made the world, and suppose someday you will stand before this creator. If you chose to believe that, would that change your lifestyle any? And he was real quiet for almost a minute, as I recall. Finally, he looked at me and he said, that would totally have to change everything. I said, okay, then let me ask you a simple question, son. Have you accepted this evolution teaching in your school because you really have some scientific evidence for it? Or have you accepted it because of your lifestyle? You like the idea of not having a God tell you what to do. He was real quiet again for a minute. He said, I've accepted evolution because I'm horny. I said, well, son, let me explain something. As a former biology teacher, every male of every species, from termites to whales, is horny. That's the way God made it. But that's not an excuse to, to reject the creator. It was amazing. At least he was honest for a time, anyway. So question, does my creation teaching cause some people to hate me because I'm a threat to their lifestyle? They think if they accepted God, they could no longer do some of the things they do, whether it's fornication or adultery or homosexuality or theft or lies or cursing or swearing. I don't know. I don't know any of I, these hope and haters out there really amaze me. And I want you to send this to all of them and tell them that they need to analyze why do they hate me? I'm 62 years old, I'd never beat anybody up, I've never tasted alcohol, only had one woman ever in my life, I'm a grandfather, I write books for my grandkids, I have five of them, I love my family, I, I have Bible study three times a day in my room, uh, I, don't, I don't hurt a flea. Why do you hate me? Think about it, why? I think it's because I'm a threat to their lifestyle. They know if they accept this Jesus that I teach about, they're going to have to change some things. Well, let me give you some good news, okay? You don't have to change those things. God will make you want to change them. You let Jesus come in, all of a sudden it's like, wow, Lord, what can I do to help? What can I do to serve you? Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. He wants to save you. He wants to live inside of you. He wants to forgive you. And if you'll let him... He'll be glad to do it. The real reason some people hate me is because my simple teaching on creation removes the cloak that they hide behind. They're wearing this cloak of evolution and they think, aha, God can't see me now, or the people can't see the wickedness in my life. 
Okay, you see, we'll see how that works for you, Judgment Day. In Second Peter chapter 3, the Bible tells us pretty clearly that the scoffers in the last days would be willingly ignorant. That means dumb on purpose. They like being ignorant, and they don't want to change. They are willingly ignorant of three things. They're ignorant of the creation. They're ignorant of the flood. They don't want to admit God judged the world before. And they're ignorant of the coming judgment. That's the same three things people are ignorant of today. They don't want to admit God created the world. That means he owns it. They don't want to mean God flooded the world because that means he has the authority to destroy his creation if he wants, and they sure don't want to admit he's coming to judge it again. Well, he's coming. Newsflash, he's coming again, and you better get ready for that day. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, 5, and 6, Jesus said the uh, people are... Uh, let's look that one up here. He said, every idle word will be brought into judgment. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, every idle word. When you read the book of Ecclesiastes, which is Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it says every work will be brought into judgment. Not only every word, every work. Everything you've ever done or said or even thought about is going to be judged one day. And you can deny that if you'd like, and you can, you know, plug your ears and walk through the minefield and say, well, if it goes off, at least I won't hear it. Uh, okay. You're going to be judged one day, and Jesus, want, he already took that judgment. Why on earth would you do it again? Jesus took the judgment on the cross. So 46 years ago, I was 16 years old. I said, Lord, I am a sinner. I deserve to go to hell, but I believe you died for me. I would like to receive you right now today as my Savior. If you're listening to my voice today and you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, that's the simple solution. You don't have to be a Hoven hater or a Hanson hater. We're not the bad guys. We, we love the Lord and we'll try to love you. Some of you make it a little difficult, I'll be honest, okay, with some of the things you say, especially those who lie about me intentionally. <laughs> what did I do to you? I've never even met you. Why would you do, uh, do these lies? But anyway, God loves you and I'm trying. So rather than spend the rest of your life being a Hoven hater, don't hide behind me when you go stand before God and say, it's Hoven's fault, I didn't accept you. I want you to know God loves you, I'm trying, and you can, be, you can join the same family. It's wonderful. I've got guys come to my Bible study in my room that did not have a good family life. They are so excited to know they can have a family. They can be one of God's children. You can too. There's no magic prayer. But here's what I prayed, and something, God's looking at the heart. I prayed 46 years ago. I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me. Would you please forgive me and save me right now? And if you'll ask him, he'll save you and be your master right now. And he'll welcome you into the family. So. God said in uh, Isaiah 118, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. It doesn't matter what you've done. Some of you hate me and hate Hanson and hate the creation message because you got some pretty bad sin in your life to cover up and you know it. I mean, there are some things that if the world found out what you have done, you would be extremely embarrassed. Well, the world is going to find out everything you've done. However, the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse all that away. Judgment Day, God's going to call my name, Ken Hovind. He's going to look at the slate and say, everything's clean, come on in. And other people are going to say, what do you mean everything's clean? You don't know what he did, Lord. God's going to say, everything's clean, come on in, son. You want to get your slate clean? Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Thank you so much. Hope that helps you. And if you want to keep hating me, that's fine. It just gives me more rewards. Matthew 5, blessed are you and men shall persecute you. So you're really helping me by hating me. But uh, I'd rather see you join the family. Thank you so much.